Dr. Hassan is here. Uh, the lecture is about problem solving uh, and I want to talk about circuits. So in total, we can say uh, circuit is all about electricity. So electricity, um, the way that work, like let's talk about the example of DC electricity. In DC electricity, you have a battery that has a positive and negative. Then this positive and negative can be used for on a consumer. So what's happening that these little electrons are coming inside the consumer and then going back to the positive. So the positive is the thirsty side, that they don't have electron, that's why we call it positive. They have a lack of electrons, they attract the electron, and electron go through this consumer going back there. Now if there is no consumer there, it's going to be just simply a spark, right? Now the consumer can be creating light, heat, work, communication, or lots of other cool stuff that you have on your phone. So basically, just consider one scenario. A scenario that you want to turn on LED light. If you close the switch, electricity will go there and then turn on the LED light. Now what would be the problem in turning on the LED light? The problem could be if you don't have a resistor here, you can actually pop the LED light. Now what the resistor does, the resistor is one of the components in electrical circuit, is that they slow down the electricity. Now, slowing down the electricity, meaning that they reduce the voltage. Now, what is voltage? Um, in electricity, we have two quantities. One quantity is voltage, the other one is current. Now, voltage, if you want to resemble a voltage, I can resemble it to pressure of water, right? If we, can see, if we consider water is coming, and then inside a pipe, inside the pipe, you have two quantities. One would be the pressure, how much pressure you have on the pipe. The other one will be flow, amount of water, right? So the amount of electricity, we call it current, which is a flow of electricity. Then pressure would be how much uh, dense is the electricity. Now pressure could be as high as thousands volt, could be up to 12 volt, three volt, 1.5 volt, whatever you use in your phone. Now, um, the unit for pressure or voltage is volt. The unit for current in electricity, we call it amp. So uh, there's something called Ohm's law. So Ohm's law relates voltage, current, and resistor. Now what it's saying is saying that V is equal to IR. Voltage is equal to current times resistor. Resistor would be voltage over current. Now what is the unit? The unit for voltage is V. The unit for current is amp or A. The unit for resistor is ohm, which is voltage over current. And then we show it look like a hat like this. Now, let's consider two scenarios. One scenario where the resistors are in series. The other one, resistors are in parallel. Now, what's the meaning of series? What's the meaning of parallel? Series is that when two resistors, they are coming after each other. If electricity wants to go, it has to go through both of them. Now, in this example, if you want to go from Detroit to Ann Arbor, you have to go through Ypsilanti. Now, these two are coming in series. So you go from one and then you go to the next one. In such cases where you go in series, you have, you're going to have the same flow. So I would be the same. I total would be equal to I1 is equal to I2. Now, what would happen to the voltage? The voltage, the pressure, the pressure total, again, we, what we say pressure is pressure difference. Pressure difference in total, the voltage will drop some of them in the beginning, some of them at the end. So you can say V total is equal to V1 plus V2. Parallel where you have choice. For instance, if you want to go between two routes and then you have route one and route two. That's what we call it, you have a choice of one and two. In this case, the electricity can pick, either go through the top, either go through the bottom. Now what we say, we say in this case, I splits. So I total would be equal to I1 plus I2, but voltage will be the same. Voltage in these two sides will be the same. V will be equal to V1 equal to V2. And that completely makes sense because pressure will be the same in both, in both sides. Assuming these are two pipes, if you put the pressure gauge, the pressure difference between these two points will be the same as V is equal to V1 is equal to V2. 
Now, what we could say, we could do some calculation. If the resistors are in series, like R1 and R2, you can say V total is equal to V1 plus V2. Again, if you use the Ohm's law and then you replace V with IR, you can say I total R total is equal to I1 R1 plus I2 R2. Now, uh, we, because we know I total is equal to I1 is equal to I2, from there, you can actually summarize your finding. R total is equal to R1 plus R2. So now, the finding is that when two resistors are in series, R1, R total is equal to R1 plus R2. Now, when two resistors are in parallel, what we said, we said that I is equal to I1 plus I2. So your I will split. Some of the I will go up there here. So this will be I1. Some of the I goes there, we call it I2. So R total is equal to I1 plus I2. Now instead of I, I can use V over R because Ohm's law say that V is equal to I R. Then if I put it in this equation, I'm gonna get V total over R total, V1 plus R, R1 plus V2 over R2. Now you can actually cross off the V, you ended up at this equation. Let's do a recap. Uh, recap would be the first recap we have, we have the Ohm's law. We say V is equal to IR. Now the second one we know, we know that if they are in series or parallel. In series, when the circuit is in series, you can say R total is equal to R1 plus R2. When it's parallel, you can say one over reciprocal, right? 1 over R total is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2. Let's do a circuit problem. In this example, the question asks me, given this condition, find the value for R. So I set up a circuit. Using these circuits, I've done some measurement. I know the source is 3 volt. I know the current that go through the whole circuit is 3 amp. I have done that measurement. And I actually use the resistor for 2 ohm, 1 ohm, and 3 ohm. And I want to find the value for R. How can I go about this problem? So what I could do is that I could replace this two resistor. Like let's call this one R1. Call this one R2. Call this one R3. So I can actually replace R1 and R2 with one equivalent resistor. I'm going to call that one R12, R12, right? R1, 2. These two are in series. When two resistors are in series, you can just simply add them together. So you can say R1 and 2 is equal to R1 plus R2, which will be equal to 4 ohm. So let me just type, write it down. So you later on, if you see it, 3 ohm plus 1 ohm, the answer is... Now, if I simplify my circuit, my circuit is going to look like this. So you have a R here, you have a 2 here, which is R3, and then at the end, I replace those two with one. So I'm going to call that one R1 and 2, and the value for that is 4 ohm. So now let's look at this case. In this case, I have the V total equal to three volt. I have the R total, sorry, I have the I total What does this mean? Because if I have the V total and I have the R total, sorry, I have the I total, I would be able to find R total just using the Ohm's law. So Ohm's law say that V is equal to I R. So R would be equal to V over I. So V total over R total. This is going to be equal to three divided by three. Your value is one O. So we already know that the R total is equal to one O. So how can I find the R? So you have three resistors. Those three resistors are in parallel. Let's just look at it. How? What do I mean with parallel? Because you have choices. It can go through here. It can go through here. It can go through here. So the other thing I could do is that actually 
not all of them are parallel so in this case these two are parallel with the third one is in a series so if I open those two on the top and then I have one at the bottom so let's replace those two on the top this one I'm going to call this one rx with r3 so rx and r3 they are they are parallel together so when we have two parallel circuits so we have rx and we have r3 so r3 and x is equal to i want to find it so because these two are parallel what we could say we could say 1 over r 3x is equal to 1 over rx plus 1 over r3 now rx i don't know it i want to find it r3 i know it i3 is 2 so i can say 1 over r3x is equal to 1 over r i can just call this one r because i don't want to call it rx it was just r so 1 over r plus 1 over So let's keep this one here for now. I can I can actually cross multiply this, and then you're gonna get. Uh, if you use the common denominator here, you can say one over r three x is equal to common denominator here is two r. This will be two plus r. Let's keep it here. Now you can actually flip this. If you flip this, you're gonna get r three x is equal to two r over two plus r. Now, once you replace this with R, R3 and X, you have just one resistor up there. So your circuit is going to look like this. R3 and X down here. So you have R1 and 2. So we already know R total. R total is equal to 1 O. Oh. So we have two resistors. These two resistors are actually, again, these are in series. Because why is it in series? Because let's look at the flow of electricity, right? Electricity is coming through here, then it's coming through. It goes through the whole circuit. It goes through both of them. So I can say R total is equal to R3 and X plus r1 and 2 so r3x was 1 ohm is equal to r3x is this and r1 and 2 was 4 ohm then from this equation you can actually calculate the value for r based on my calculation the value for r would be negative which is kind of impossible uh, because uh, because uh, again this is how I made up the numbers if I want to get something working on from here I would need to change the value for instance for for R to be something look like 10 so for instance here in order to got the to got the, uh, a bigger value for R I can just simply say this one here is 30 volt right I'm going to just say that this is 30 volt the V total this will create a 10 ohm and then I'm going to get the R total as 10 ohm now if you continue from here you can say 2R over 2 plus R is equal to 10 minus 4 which is 6 then from here we have 2R is equal to 2 times 2 plus R, 4 plus 4R. At the end I ended up again with the equation which is R is going to be negative. This is just a problem that I made it up. The problem that you have in your test is very much easier than, uh, than this problem. Thank you very much for watching this. I will create another video 